Welcome back. I'm still in conversation with Mr. Adi Godres. Uh, Mr. Adi Godres, northeast of India, eight states, 45 million people, four foreign neighbors. Uh, you have a presence among the very few, uh, I mean, corporate giants. Godres has a presence in Assam, Mizoram, Meghalaya, and Sikkim. Uh, tell me the story. Well, first of all, we have presence in all the states in terms of marketing. Yeah, marketing. I'm we talking about manufacturing. There. Yeah. In the Northeast is a strong market yes. for our products. Absolutely. We sell our products in the most remote villages of Arunachal Correct. Pradesh or Nagaland. Uh, I'm talking about but manufacturing. We manufacture uh, our products in four of the states in the Northeast, and we're very successful. In, in fact, in Mizoram, uh, we have an oil palm division, which grows, farmers grow oil palm, where we get palm oil, we have a crushing mill, etc. We have a manufacturing of consumer products in Assam, uh, Meghalaya and Sikkim. Uh, we supply from the Northeast to many other parts uh, of India. The Northeast, I think, is developing strongly. The Northeast has a great future. It adds to variety in India. It adds to different religions. There are Buddhists in the Northeast. There are Christians in the Northeast. Of course, there are many Hindus too. And the Northeast is a, a great part of India. And it creates the diversity, very successful diversity of India. And now the internal problems in the Northeast, the rebellions in the Northeast are coming down very considerably. And I see a great future for the Northeast. Mm -hmm. so, so security has been a key concern and you're happy that now the rebellions or insurgencies are coming down. Uh, Mr. Godres, uh, you know, uh, the government of India's f uh, fiscal, financial incentives uh, to you know, uh, people who set up shop, like Godrez, for example, has the manufacturing units, they've suddenly decided that they'll not list uh, you know, any new entities. So you were upset at one point of time, a couple of years ago. Uh, what is your take today? No, I think the present policy is not bad because what they've done is they've allowed people to invest up to a certain date yeah. and given a 10-year incentive thereafter. So this will continue. We have done a lot of new investments in the Northeast in the recent past. So we will continue to enjoy some of these benefits over the next 10 years. And Northeast will be a, a very strong part of our manufacturing progress for many years to come. Absolutely. That's a very reassuring uh, to really hear that. Uh, so uh, one thing. Now, the government of India, uh, as you know, has been talking about the Lucas policy since the early 90s. Now it has been, if I may use the word, revamped and upgraded. It, now they call it the actist policy. Now my question to you, assuming that the, f the focus, of course, as you know, is on connectivity, roads and railways. Assuming that the roads and railways linking the Northeast with the neighboring countries to Myanmar and beyond in ASEAN and etc., suppose they are in place, how does the region really take advantage? What does the road going to change? What does the railway is going to change? Because there are hardly any huge manufacturing. And you are not going to send your products from Bombay via Calcutta and then take the road and send it to Myanmar and the then or thereafter? No, I think the Northeast has a very strategic positioning, both in terms of uh, linkages with Bangladesh yeah. and linkages Myanmar. with uh, ASEAN, especially Myanmar. So the Northeast is uh, uh, very important. For example, now that Myanmar is opening up with a democratic government, yes. we are planning to set up shop in Myanmar. We are already selling our products there. We would like to manufacture in Myanmar. And the Northeast could be a supply point. For example, if we manufacture in Myanmar, we could be supplying things like packaging materials, etc., from the Northeast, because uh, there are good uh, factories already set up there. So Bangladesh is also a big market for us. We already sell in Bangladesh. We have a large animal feed operation in Bangladesh, and we have a large consumer products operation in Bangladesh. So all this can be integrated with the Northeast, and in time to come, I think it will be a seamless situation in that part of the world. Absolutely. That means, uh, what I understand is that uh, you are pretty excited about the activist policy and the potential it can bring to not just the country, but to the, uh, to the landlocked northeastern region. Oh, yes. Very important. And I think it will open up. And I think, uh, for example, northeast, some parts of the northeast are not very far from Chittagong port. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't make sense using Calcutta. So, and now uh, Bangladesh has agreed to allow Chittagong yes, to be used. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But how do you look at the competition from cheap Chinese products? That is flooding the markets in the northeastern region. Well, let me say, we have a very strong FMCG business yes. here. We don't have much products, uh, competition from Chinese products, official or unofficial. 
So we are very strong in India. We can compete with any Chinese imports that might come in. Chinese imports in some other spheres perhaps are affecting India. But this is a global economy. We have to learn to be competitive. And if the Chinese have created some advantages by better policies, we have to learn to create such policies. If GST comes in, a lot of the additional costs Indian manufacturers incur because of lack of a GST will go away and India will become even more competitive, not only in India, but in terms of exports to other countries. So I think we are on our way to becoming extremely competitive. China has now started having a shortage of labor. China will have problems in the future. India can fill the void. India can fill the void. So basically what, what you're saying that we can leverage our demographic dividend and this, at this critical juncture. Very much so. Very much so. This is the right time. And uh, India can be extremely competitive both globally and in the country. Lastly, uh, in this growth story, India's growth story, uh, how to capitalize on this demographic dividend? What are the three things the country needs to do, the youths need to look for? Well, we need to increase the salience of manufacturing in our GDP. Manufacturing is what employs a lot of people. Manufacturing is what makes you strong. Manufacturing helps strong GDP growth. Secondly, in order to be able to create a match between the people needs of the country and the people's employment, we need to skill and train a very large part of our youth so that they're all extremely productive in the economy. And lastly, we must create a system where rates of taxes are low, it encourages entrepreneurship, encourages business, but tax collection rises because it creates high rates of growth. Absolutely. So I think the combination of it, and I think this government is well on the path of creating this kind of a milieu. Absolutely. Market forces should give direction to the government to Absolutely. do things in a positive way. Absolutely. Mr. Adi Godras, thank you very much very for nice being on my show. It's a pleasure thank talking you. to you.